Shalom, today is January 22nd and we're in the 108th day of the war with Hamas. Here in all Israel, we're watching together Channel 12. The IDF is expanding the attacks in Khan Yunus in the south part of the Gaza and is besieging the west part of Khan Yunus. Also, um, it's official that three more soldiers from the paratroopers brigade fell in battle. David Nati Al-Fasi, 27 years old from Be'er Sheva. Ilai Levi, 24 years old from Tel Aviv. Eyal Mevorach Tuito, 22 years old from Beit Gamliel. May their memory be blessed. We'll begin with Nir Dvori, the uh, military reporter. He's speaking about the expansion of the battles in south of uh, the Gaza Strip. Three Lohamei Tzanchanim, three paratrooper fighters, fell in battle in Khan Yunis. We're also hearing helicopters. It's not the first one this evening that we're hearing over the house here in Judean Hills. The reporter is saying that there was an anti-tank missile that was launched to the building where these soldiers were. Two other soldiers were um, injured severely and they were taken to the hospital. In the last few hours, there have been significant fighting, very intensive battles. There have been fierce battles in Khan Yunis and in the center part of the Gaza Strip. Um, over 50 terrorists were shot um, in just the last few hours. The IDF is managing a very intensive uh, fighting uh, in the face of Hamas uh, battalions and brigades in the Machane Plitim, the refugee camps. The IDF is preventing the return of um, um, residents to the northern part of the Gaza Strip because it's a card against uh, Hamas for the release of hostages. Here's a Ohad Chemo, another reporter that's um, going to share more details about the battles in Khan Yunis. He says that um, there was a feeling amongst the Palestinians that Israel is a little bit like slowing down, especially in the northern part of the border. But in the last few hours, and as, even now as we speak, the IDF is working very intensively in the west of Khan Yunis, um, places where the IDF has not worked before, has not operated beforehand. And there's no one safe place in the Gaza Strip except for Rafiyah, a city uh, in the southern, very southern part of Gaza. And we see um, thousands migrating from the central of Gaza Strip from the south to Rafa. Rafa is Rafiyah. What is in Khan Yunis, you may ask? There are two things, according to the reporter. One is the senior leadership of Hamas. Um, it sounds, it, it says like the hard nut of Hamas. The second thing is the very extensive tunnel system that's there that perhaps even hostages um, may be in some of these tunnels. Here is more reporting and footage about, of the uh, fighting in Khan Yunis since last night and today and now. And according to the reports uh, that are coming from there, Khan Yunis is besieged. It's surrounded from the sides from, uh, by the IDF, uh, the Israeli military. Many explosions from the air, tanks in the on the roads, Hamas continues to use hospitals, universities, civilian places uh, for their service. They're using civilians as human shields. She says, we couldn't expect this. We did not know what ha happened. We were evacuated under uh, fire. I took the kids and I ran. I went to one uh, uh, hospital. They said, it's not safe here. Go to a university. Then I went to the university. That wasn't safe. Because of the Israeli military operations, they're going now, the, eva the evacuees or the refugees are going to uh, the Rafa, Rafa city, which is safer right now. Amongst the targets that were attacked was a training camp of Hamas. This is by far the uh, biggest expansion of the war in Khan Yunis. It's quick and it's extensive. The anchor is turning to General Israel Aziv, he's the he former head of the Operation Division of the Israeli military. And he says this is a peak or the high point of uh, the battles, especially in Khan Yunis, because, mainly because it's happening above the snake's head, as he calls it, above the headquarters of Hamas, as the senior leaders are really underneath the ground, deep down in Khan Yunis, as they suspect. He says that there's a strategic window here, uh, operationally, as Israel is at its operational peak in Khan Yunis. 
undecisiveness in the, upper, in the diplomatic field may wear out the operational, operational achievements in Gaza. Um, he's speaking about the North, too, as Hezbollah just wants to wear out, as it seems like, it just wants to wear out uh, Israel, its uh, citizens that have been evacuated from there, so many, um, and the soldiers in the northern border. So he says Israel need, has a strategic window here to act, to act in uh, Lebanon, to act in Gaza. Missing it will cost a lot to Israel. Next are the personal stories of two of the soldiers uh, that had fallen in battle. This is Uriel Aviad Silberman uh, in reserve duty. He, from very young, he um, absorbed values of uh, grace, mercy, and um, generosity. For years, he volunteered in all sorts of organizations. Last night, he fell in battle in Gaza. Next is Shai Levinson, 19 years old, from Givat Avni. He studied Arabic. He believed in peace. He worked a lot in the pe for the peace process. He was a, um, a very good um, tennis player. He was kidnapped on October 7th. And yesterday they officially announced that he's not amongst the living, but he's dead. And Hamas is holding his body. This is his brother that's, um, that's sharing the details of what happened exactly on October 7th and how his brother that was uh, on uniform as a soldier was kidnapped. His brother is saying, I'm not willing, I'm not ready for um, other soldiers risking their life to bring back my, my brother's body uh, back into Israel. I don't want any other family to go what we are going through. For more updates and stories, you can go to allisrael.com, follow us on social media. Please share these stories with your friends in your country where you are. This is Rotem again for All Israel News.